Hey guys, Jack here and today we're taking a look at some new hardware that ASUS have kindly sent over to me. As you're seeing on the screen here, not any old hardware either. What you're looking at right now is the ROG PG348Q 100Hz curved ultra widescreen monitor. It's arguably the daddy of monitors and it's one of the nicest monitors I've ever used and has given me a taste of how immersive ultra wide gaming can be. On top of this they sent over a G GTX 1060, a 1070 and also another monitor, the PG248Q, looks quite unassuming and plain doesn't it, but it actually houses a true 180Hz screen which is simply ridiculous, more on that later. So first up, full disclosure, ASUS haven't paid me any money to create this video. They sent me this stuff over, but I do get to keep it, which is very lucky and I'm very grateful for that, so thank you to them. But the reason I agreed to do this video is because the hardware we have here is pretty damn cool and it offers up some genuinely awesome gaming experiences and I thought you guys would like to see. With that said, let's get stuck into the meat and the bones and see what we're dealing with here. First up, that massive curved screen the ASUS PG348Q and it's powered here by the ASUS GTX 1070 Strix. You'll recognize the custom cooler there if you saw my 1080 video a month back. So same cooler, a GTX 1070 and the core clock is boosting up to around 1974 MHz whenever you're gaming. It's a fantastic card, great temperatures and if you want to OC it yourself to push it a bit further you can actually squeeze a bit more out of it for sure. That monitor then, the spec of it are nuts and like I said honestly some of the best gaming experiences I've had on PC. I've been using it for around three to four weeks now. To start with it's a 100Hz screen, 60Hz sucks, it's old hat for PC gaming now, 100Hz is nice and smooth, very low input lag and you can be competitive with it. It's an IPS panel too so the colours and viewing angles are fantastic and the icing on the cake is that the resolution on this monitor is 3440 by 1440 That's a 21 by 9 aspect ratio, ultra widescreen and I'll have some footage of games on here too with the frame rates in the top left hand corner but you know I just think it's really nice to have that extra horizontal screen space. FPS games like BF1 are extremely immersive, imagine playing on this with no HUD, racing games also brilliant unfortunately need for speed which you're seeing here doesn't have a cockpit view but a game like project cars for example and you can go into a cockpit view that would be pretty awesome and then of course action and adventure games like tomb raider really nice to play on pc at this resolution with a controller this monitor produces a beautiful image and that extra screen space is good for editing too so pretty good for me. I'd argue that you don't actually need a second monitor for editing when you're running at this resolution because you get so much horizontal space. In terms of aesthetics I think it's quite a nice industrial design. You've got this diagonal bevel at the front there, the crazy looking three prong stand with the logo light at the bottom that you can turn on and off if you want to and also the backside probably the only time that I'll ever show you the back of a monitor on this channel but just take a look at that intricate patterns with a compartment that snaps on for hiding the wires. So on the plus side wow this monitor will give you an incredible gaming experience providing you've got a decent graphics card that can keep up with that resolution. The colors are bold and vivid, 100hz is smooth, ultra widescreen gaming is pretty damn sexy. Negatives for the monitor well I can't really fault the specs but of course it is very expensive. In the UK this is going to set you back around a thousand pound. Eek that's going to burn a serious hole in your wallet. It's definitely a big commitment to make and also not all games have proper 219 support yet which can be a bummer. You're definitely paying a premium here for an excellent monitor that's got all the specs and bells and whistles you could want. For the 1070 graphics card I'm going to run a few clips of games now all maxed out and if your internet can handle it play the video in 4k even if you don't have a 4k monitor the video quality is going to look way better than 1080p.
We are losing objective Duff. We have lost objective Duff. Spot to the scout. Boom, there it is, very nice. Moving on, let's take a look at that 1060 and PG248Q. What ASUS are going for here, I think, is kind of a competitive bundle, I suppose. And this card and monitor are aimed squarely at eSports Fanatics, super double tryhards, basically. The 1060 uses the same cooler as the 1070. They look identical with the same outputs too, so it's going to keep your GPU nice and cool. Excellent boost clocks in OC mode as well. The 1060 is more than a capable graphics card at 1080p. Let's take a quick look at the performance now. That other monitor then, the PG248Q, like I said at the start of the video, quite unassuming, it looks nice and sleek, nothing too stand out or flashy here, but this monitor has a devilish trick up its sleeve. It can operate at 180 hertz, a true screen refresh rate of 180 times per second. You won't be able to see that now because the video is only in 30 FPS, but in real life this thing is buttery smooth and rated at a 1 millisecond response time i can't stress it enough even the leap from 60 hertz to 120 hertz is huge but going up to 180 hertz it feels like i'm playing cs 1.3 again on a 17 inch 200 hertz crt if you can get plus 180 frames on your games this monitor feels rapid you can run it in 144 hertz mode too if you want and i have to admit that at 180 hertz the colors take a big hit and there is a light bleed coming through but ultimately if you're playing csgo bf1 or overwatch at 300 frames per second on low settings do you really care about that kind of thing 
probably not. If I was still playing CS competitively and practicing 6pm to 11pm every night, then this is the monitor I would have right now, absolutely no doubt about it. Negatives though, viewing angles and colours aren't as good. This is a TN panel monitor and it's on the expensive side too at £400 in the UK. There are some cheaper 144Hz options available at 1080p, but in terms of input lag, smoothness and responsiveness, it's one of the best 1080p monitors I've used and if you want that you're going to have to pay a premium for it. So there we have it guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video, I know not really a gaming commentary kind of style, but cool hardware nonetheless. If you did like it, give me a thumbs up, that would be awesome. If you didn't like it, a thumbs down. Once again, a big thanks to Asus for sending all this gear over my way. I think I'm going to actually make like a, a fort out of monitors and graphics card now, and you're all invited to come over and play if you want. If you want more information on any of the products in this video, there are links in the description below that you can click on to check them out. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.